Good morning, Peters Township. My name is Anna Tromuler, and welcome back to The Edge. When I was a freshman, I was so confused on how to make new friends and find myself as an individual. Then I met some of my best friends in classes and sports. Of course, my relationships have changed since freshman year, but what I've started to realize is, is, how, is how they have impacted me positively. On today's episode, we will be talking about the importance of changing relationships as a teenager. While most high school students at the age of 16 have about nine close friends, by the age of 35, we have about seven. Changing relationships as a teenager, whether it is a friend, girlfriend, or boyfriend, often makes teens feel lonely or unliked or in reality, but in reality, they are part of, it is a part of growing up. Changing as a person, finding Finding personal interest in surrounding yourself with good people is important, yet we fail to realize that. Today I'm here with my lovely guidance counselor, cheer coach, and biggest fan, but I'm her biggest fan, Miss Simmons. Thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Okay, so my first question is, why are friendships so important as a teenager? As a teenager, we all want to be in a space with people that are cheering for us, on our side, people that share experiences with us. We're, we're a type of species, because we're humans, mm -hmm. that like to be with people, and we like to share our experiences. So having those friendships and building those in high school is an important part. Why are changing friendships so, like, why do teens change friendships so much as a teen? So once we go from middle school to high school, we enter a space where there's a lot more opportunities, a lot more options, and class schedules, different clubs, sports, activities. Um, you might be on the same team in eighth grade, but when you get to the high school, some students like to try theater, other students stick with football and hockey or different clubs and activities. So a lot of times the interests that we have lead into the electives that we choose. So oftentimes we're not spending as much time in the classroom with our friends that we may have in eighth grade. And as that continues, we start to build new friendships with those people that have the same interests as we do. How are high school friendships like more um, mature than middle school friendships? I think you start to see what is beneficial to you as a friend, but also seeing what people are doing in terms of impacting us negatively. And I think we start to make that differentiation in high school because we're choosing to build those friendships that support us and encourage us rather than pull us down. Why are teenagers so affected by friendships? Like why is it taken as such like a hard thing when in reality it's something that can kind of build you up? I think that there's a there's a navigating a group of people when you have two people it's just the two of you but then you add in three or four or five people and then you have a group so with groups it's hard to navigate this this pairing is better together than this pairing and then you put those in together like when you see um, working as captains in threes it's a little bit more difficult than with twos right. because you have three differing opinions where two might get together and in and know what's happening and one kind of feels left out so it starts when you start to build in more people into a group you start to see that trend of a little bit um, differences up affecting that group of people yeah like you said like the um, friend groups like differ in like the size of group in the group of people why is it like so important to have like multiple diverse groups of friends than just one group of friends where often people can fall behind if you have differing opinions and differing types of groups, you learn more from those people. If you stick to one set mind, then you don't really expand on your interests or things that can affect you in a positive way. Um, when you stick to one like-minded group of people, you are limiting yourself in the things that you can experience and do and learn from others. Yeah. Um, how a lot of times people will say um, it's, it's better to have a variety of group of friends than rather than just one best friend in high school how do you think that relates to is that true do you think I, I find it to be true I think it's hard to navigate I think we like to be in pairs or in groups and when you see somebody this is my best friend so mm -hmm. that's a hard thing to kind of put onto somebody as well um, because they might have experiences or enjoy other things that you might not enjoy but they do so giving them that puts pressure on that friendship to say like you're my best friend but in reality they might have other friends or other groups of friends so finding that way to navigate 
enjoying people's company for their company, not to make you feel better about yourself. Yes, a friendship allows that to happen, um, but it's finding that self-esteem within you and what makes you a good person yeah. um, that is ultimately going to carry you into good friendships in the future. Right. How is a teenager's definition of a good friendship different from an adult's definition? I think teenagers, it's it becomes more about who's going to be on my side no matter what. But in adulthood, I feel like I have found people that are going to tell me the truth is a better friend than somebody that um, is going to tell me what I want to hear. So in high school, we like to hear what we want to hear in a, in a problem or in a situation. Um, we get ourselves into situations where we're fighting with a friend. Um, in high school, I feel like we want to hear that we're right versus that you're not doing that the best way. You could approach this differently. Um, and I think that's the difference between high school relationships versus adult relationships. And believe me, adults have problems with it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, when teens get in like sticky situations, um, how are they like attracted by these characteristics of like bad friendships and like not being treated well? How are they? Um, how are they connecting with these friendships? Like, why? Why are they? It's the easy way out. Yeah. Um, I think when we're influenced by negative things, it's harder to do the right thing mm -hmm. than the wrong thing. Right. Um, so I think with friendships, when people are more, are more attracted to negative influences, it's because it's easier. How does this affect, like, a teen stress level? Like, doing bad things so that they can fit in, or how does that affect... I think it affects, it's, it's a stress level that affects people in different ways. Um, students that know that they might be making a poor choice for themselves and do it anyway, it affects them differently. Mm -hmm. It might cause them more stress because they know in their, in their heart, in their mind, that that's something that they really shouldn't be doing or getting involved in. Um, students that are, I, I think it affects everyone differently. Um, so when you see people making choices and doing negative things, you want to find that person that's going to pull you out and say, you probably shouldn't be making that choice. Mm -hmm. So, like, I know that in high school, like, it's more so that ki kids find those bad things and are attracted to those things because they want to fit in. So how can, like, keeping in touch with old friends be helpful when kids do these things? Like, because it's bound to happen. Like, we all know. Yeah. yeah, I think we are all influenced by things differently, and it, and it depends on where we feel we fit in and where we feel we want to fit in. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes that, that crowd of people that are making bad influence are the loudest types of people, and you feel that that's the, the way to go or that's the more popular crowd um, just because they might be louder. Um, not loud in terms of their voices or yelling in the halls, but um, their influence spreads a little bit more than somebody who's quiet and... Um, enjoys people's company for for different reasons so sometimes that louder group is the one that everyone's attracted to because it's like oh it looks like they're having fun or mm -hmm. it looks like they're they're all a really great group of friends but once you kind of get into it and really see the relationships it's not always as it looks on the surface what are some like common ways that teens start to lose friends like how are friendships usually broken um, sometimes it's the influences that we choose to accept. Um, some students know that I don't want to be doing these things or I don't want to get involved in that kind of situation, so that can break a friendship. Um, just differing interests and differing mm -hmm. values. Um, sometimes once we get to high school, like I said, students get more involved in different activities and find that um, group of people more influential to them. and it's a student that might be in band and theater and, ex and were friends with somebody who was more into clubs, activities, and maybe a sport. Um, so their time is spent differently. So where your time is spent, you start to spend more time with the people that you're around most often. Um, what are some ways that these friendships can be healed, like that you can heal yourself after a broken friendship? It depends on what broke the friendship. Um, and I think, I, I keep saying it depends, because yeah. in, in relationships it truly depends on the situation and why we got to where we are. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the biggest thing is be honest with yourself, right. but be honest with that friend um, or that person that you want to mend the relationship with. And sometimes you need an adult's help. Right. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've sat with students in my office and talked through a situation that might not have been the best to talk through alone or utilizing face-to-face -face conversation because right. via text message or um, direct messaging or those types of things, the perception gets lost. Um, a student that messages on Instagram or Facebook or however 
the, the message starts, if you feel the person's mad at you, you're going to read that message like they're mad. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily thinking that they're not mad, they're just giving me a direct statement. Right. Um, so when you don't have this face-to-face -face conversation, you don't see body language, you don't see facial expressions, you don't see those types of things. So when you're really wanting to mend a friendship, face-to-face -face is the, uh, for me, the best way to go. Yeah. How can the guidance department help with these? the people that need someone or just needs like reassurance about mm -hmm. a friendship that maybe is falling apart or just getting stronger. And I think every year we try to we try to impact the school differently. Um, we try to see what's going on, what's happening, all those different things. So we've started a new freshman orientation to get more of a, a connectedness to the school. And as that builds, we try to make sure that the upperclassmen are connecting to the students that are feeling lost or not together. Um, I know that I try to connect with sports and we try to make people that are in different activities to reach out to those that are not. With these groups in sports, how have you seen like a change in how people react with one another through like freshman orientation or a team? How have you seen that kids have changed? I mean, I've seen kids being more apt to showing leadership, to noticing the students that are maybe sitting at lunch by themselves or at practice off off by themselves or doing different things and including them. I'm seeing that more and more as students are getting to um, into those programs and being a leader within freshman orientation or being a captain within their sport. Right. That's so good to know that, that it's like impacting. Thank you so much, Ms. Simmons. We are going to take a short break. Up next, we will be talking more about the changes in dating as a teenager. We'll be back in a sec. Thanks. Welcome back. All right, so my first question, or well, my following question, how are relationships with a girlfriend or boyfriend similar to the commitment as being part of a friendship? I think all relationships have that key factor of communication. Um, you're with people to, whether it's a boyfriend or girlfriend or a friendship, to be supportive of one another, to feel included, and to have that connection with another person. But I think at the core of all of it, it's that communication, talking to one another, experiencing the same types of things, body language, eye contact, all of that is the same across any kind of relationship that you have, whether it's boyfriend, girlfriend, friend, teacher, um, adult, they're all kind of the same and, and kind of center around that communication and connectedness. How is communication so vital to a relationship or even a friendship. Sure. I mean, even sitting here with you now, if I just sat here and stared at you, yeah, <laughs> it would feel weird. Yeah. We, we have that, we want to have that shared experience, and part of that shared experience is telling us what that is. Um, and we have verbal communication. There are students that, being deaf or blind, they have, it's important that they have made that communication piece with all of that, we have to find ways to share that common experience. Yes, you can experience it over there, we're doing the same thing, but for me, I'm experiencing it differently, and to know what that is like, we have to communicate. Yeah, and especially today, like I know that we have cell phones on us all the time, which is, I think, sort of a positive thing, but a negative thing to any relationship. How would you say that it is impacted or sort of, um, failed friendships yeah I think that social media having a phone it, it's allowed us to truly connect 24 7 sometimes that can be good sometimes that can be bad um, and I think understanding the person that we're communicating with um, is important as well uh, I'm a person that is super busy and I might not answer you right away right. but on the other end they want an answer right away so sometimes those type that that's where things can get negative um, when we have created this social media where a phone is in our pocket all the time but when it's not it's changing that relationship a little bit of people who are communicating quickly or not but also like I, I mentioned before is 
the perception. So when I'm reading a message and you're reading a message, we can read it very differently. Um, so that's where some of that negative comes in with social media or or a phone or things like that. And sometimes the feeling of feeling left out <laughs> right. can come very easily from social media. When I was in high school, if I went out with two of my friends and two others didn't come with us, they wouldn't know <laughs> yeah. until we had that conversation. And it wasn't that they felt left out. Um, but now it's as soon as you go out, you, you put up a picture. Mm -hmm. um, and there's not really a definition of what was going on behind that either. So yeah. all of those pieces affect a relationship, whether positive or negative. Yeah. I mean, looking at my parents, like my mom goes away all the time. So, and my dad, like, will give her a phone call like once a day, but they aren't constantly mm -hmm. texting each other. How do you think that's so different from the way teenagers are versus like our parents? Like, how do you think, do you think that has any play in like how long these relationships last because I, of that? I do, and that's a really great question because, um, when your parents connect once a day, they have a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. When you're constantly talking to somebody, like first period, you talk to someone, third period, you talk to them again, maybe fourth period, you have lunch together. When in that time frame are you actually not sharing something? Mm -hmm. So when you're not with one another and you're, you're constantly texting or constantly communicating, at some point you're gonna run out of things to say or it becomes right. very surface level conversation, not something that really gets at why are you talking to me? Why, why yeah. are we having this conversation? Sometimes it's kind of meaningless yeah. um, in terms of how you're communicating when it's constant all day, every day. How would you say this is unhealthy for like a high school relationship to just always be with each other or always be texting each other? Mm -hmm. Like how is that unhealthy or grow unhealthy? It can, it can become unhealthy. I don't think it's always unhealthy. Right. It's how each person approaches it. Yeah. Um, it becomes unhealthy when that becomes a need for somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, when that conversation or that communication stops for a short period of time and someone might gain anxiety um, behind some of that, like, oh, they haven't texted me or, oh, they haven't reached out to me. And it was just simply they were at practice. Right. <laughs> they couldn't talk to you for two hours. Um, so that's where some of that... Um, negative piece kind of pulls in um, it starts to pull into oh from oh they're they're just not communicating with me oh to they they don't like me anymore and and that's a very very quick move from one to the other um, so I think that learning and understanding where each friendship kind of sits or relationship or whatever it may be um, in that communication piece and what's important to you and that other person and understanding that why do you think it's harder for teens to get over a heartbreak with constant eyes on the phone or social media? I think everyone, it's hard to get over a heartbreak or a broken relationship because you invest time. Anything that you invest time in um, becomes something that's important to you. Um, so it's finding ways to get out of that situation. So when you're constantly connected and you're constantly talking to somebody and all of a sudden it's gone, mm -hmm what do you fill your time with? So that's, I think, where this, that constant communication, that online piece makes it a little difficult for relationships to break apart. And when they do, it's harder to get out of that break. Um, adults have problems too. Um, social media affects adults. Um, but I think it's more at a space where their time is, they go to work and they, they meet their friends or they do have those seven close friends, but they have friends from work and friends from school that they actually communicate and talk to. Um, so with high school, like I said before, your friends tell you what you want to hear in high school sometimes, right. not what you need to hear. Um, so in those relationships, in those breaks, it's like however you're feeling, they're, they're feeling off the same thing. So they might not be telling you that was a bad relationship for you or the communication wasn't there or they're, they're more on your side than it is to actually work through that, that break. What are some common thoughts that go through teens' heads when they're being broken up with or when they feel like, oh my gosh, I have no one now? Like, what is that? What is like a way to get over that or what are some of the things that go through their minds? Well, I don't ever want to go back to a high school mind <laughs> of that racing, yeah. <laughs> that racing, thinking through all that constant thought. Right. Um, because often I think it feels like your your world's over, and like it's silly to think about that, but like that's how most kids look at it, which is kind of sad. Right, because I think in that moment, you don't see anything being better. It's mm -hmm. it's that be all end all mentality of 
I, I'm doing this and I'm putting all my time, all of my effort into it and maybe I just wasted six months of my life. Right. Um, but it's also, I see sometimes students getting into relationships and then forgetting about their friends. So sometimes it becomes that my relationship was all I had and now I've let my, and how do I come back to all those friends that I kind of put off to the side for such a long period of time. Um, and sometimes that can be difficult. Maybe apologizing to those friends that you've ignored for, for weeks or months. Um, and I think that apologizing or, or admitting wrongdoing in any situation is hard for anyone. Um, so coming back to those things and explaining through some of that and where you were and where you are now can be hard. How can like a heartbreak be treated? Like how and how long do you think it would take for a high school student? Everyone's very different. I'm, I've been one of those people that cut it off, move on. Yeah. <laughs> um, other people stay friends with uh, a former boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, other people try to work it out and stay friends in a group but don't really stay true friends with that person. So it is really truly situational, um, but ways that you can get around it is get a group of friends, go do something, enjoy the time that you have, spend your time doing things that are enjoyable. Um, be with your friends, be with your family, people that make you feel good. Why do you think breakups are a way of finding independence within yourself and how is that pos positive? A breakup, you said? Yeah, yeah, how can it be looked at as a positive? Um, I mean, sometimes relationships aren't working for, for specific reasons. Maybe the communication's not there. Maybe you just fell out of sync with one another. And it's, it's good because then you have time to work on you. If you're not good with yourself, maybe self-esteem or things that you enjoy and know that you enjoy, finding what's good for you because that makes you ultimately good for the next relationship that you have. How can teens or even like seniors or juniors, how can we grow from these falling out of friendships when you're maybe leaving for college or just transitioning into a new school year. How can we grow from those or how can we grow when we're going to college? I think it's setting expectations um, and expectations that don't have a definitive line in them. Saying that like I'm going to be making new friends, I'm going to be going off to college or going to start a new sport. Um, and, and working with your new friends or old friends to say, I'm, I might be doing this today or I might be um, really working at practice or off to college. It, it's just natural that the places that we end up, we are building new friendships. You're not going to go to college mm -hmm. and not engage in conversation or get involved in things because um, that's ultimately when we don't do that, we don't feel like we belong. Um, so having and setting expectations with former friends, like when high school is over, when you right. graduate, you're going off to different places. Some people go to the same schools, but even then you're going to have different roommates and you're going to get involved yeah. in different clubs. So talking through some of those changes and maybe it's including one another in the same group of friends or new group of friends. Um, but I think the biggest thing to take out of this is always communication. Yeah. How can we seek help from the guidance department with in a broken relationship? Sometimes you just need someone to talk to. Yeah. Um, and somebody that's impartial to the situation. Because mm -hmm. um, like your friends might be on your side or his friends might be on his side. Um, so in, in a situation or scenario like that, sometimes you just need to vent. That middle ground. <laughs> sometimes yeah. you just need to let it all out and, and get an opinion that's neither in it for you or the other person. Right. Um, just for the well-being of the situation. And I feel as, as a counselor, it's, it's easy to kind of see outside looking in and we're going to give you that true look at maybe this wasn't good for you or maybe you, you did approach this the wrong way. And it's having that real conversation. And from that, not just noticing what was wrong or what could have changed, but helping and giving scenarios or situations of how to make it better moving forward. How can we all, like as students or friends or classmates, teammates, how can we all help teenagers that are struggling with a broken friendship or a broken relationship? And how can we help them learn that, hey, it's okay, it's mm -hmm. going to be okay? Simply noticing when things aren't great for one person or the other um, and, and asking them, are you doing okay? Just that simple question of, are you okay? Right. Um, and allowing them to say yes or no. Um, and you'll notice in the yes or no if it's something that needs more more questions. 
Um, but just being there for one another and, and noticing those changes in the people around us. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming with me today. I can't thank you enough for joining me. Remember that it is okay to have ups and downs in relationships as a teenager. This has been all for today's episode of The Edge. See you soon. Yeah.